What's up? It's Daniel here with Slow Haste. Today, I'm going to talk about how I've been using the cue out on the Octatrack as an effects send. And I'm specifically going to be demonstrating that with the Demodash T120 Videotape Echo. And this pedal was very kindly sent over to me by Perfect Circuit. And they are also sponsoring this video, so I want to take a second to thank them. If you're somehow not aware, Perfect Circuit is a shop out in Burbank, California that sells synths and effects pedals as well as recording and pro audio gear. And they ship worldwide. They've been great to partner with for this video. And, you know, unfortunately I've never been able to make it out to Burbank, California, but if I ever go, the first place I'll stop is Perfect Circuit. Maybe after stopping at In-N-Out. And then I'll probably go to Perfect Circuit and get some synths and then bring them back to In-N-Out because that's what California is all about, right? Anyways, thanks so much to Perfect Circuit again for sponsoring the video and sending the pedal over. As always, I'm just gonna do a little bit of a jam before I get into talking about uh, how I made this beat and specifically how I'm using the T120 as part of the effects loop for the Octatrack and how I'm sending those tracks to it. So yeah, got a little uh, SpongeBob Chrome Future Jellyfish Rave-esque jam for you all. I'll stop there, you'll see what I mean. I mean, yeah, can't you just like see Squidward doing some weird interpretive dance in a Chrome future? Because that's what I was doing off screen during the jam. Always uh, dig that I can kind of play around with some weirder non-conventional stuff that I probably won't ever release on the channel. But it's super fun to kind of show some different methods to use effects like this right here. I'll just uh, chronologically kind of go through the jam and what's happening and talk about how I'm using it. So things start off uh, with this, this loop, right, this sequence. So I have this bass line set up on track four, and you can see that the track here is blinking, and you can hear it even when the track is muted. So let me show you what's going on here. By using this, well, I actually have a cue sent to my snare as well to get a little bit of that in the background, so let's mute that. So by holding Q and pressing a track, you're able to send it to this output. And as you can see, red to red, have my input going here, and then my output coming back to input C and D, which I have set up on track two. So you can hear that's muted. That's my input from C. So it's just a mono input coming through this. So what you're hearing is this track through the pedal unaffected. But when I turn it on, with the mix almost all the way up, you get this cool, weird reverse double bass synth line that just has this really cool rich sound to it. And you can really mess it up with the tape quality by having the tape quality knob all the way up. I'm kind of destroying the sound a little bit more. You can get it really warbly with some of these controls and change the amount of the repeats with the intensity knob. Throughout the performance, I'm manipulating the time knob to kind of get those cool analog delay sounds. So I also have the cue being sent from this snare track, which is really subtle, to be honest. And if I mute this, you can hear that really softly in the background. It's just a cool way of adding a little bit of texture. And importantly, you can tell that I have the level all the way down on this track because when I hold Q, 
and adjust the level knob. That's how much volume it sends to the queue output. And then this is the regular level. So that's like doubling the track, basically. So with this sort of setup, it really kind of enables myself to do a lot of live effect manipulation, right? Because as you know, that's one of the things I love about the Octatrack. And I have a couple of scenes set up. Uh, there are my hi-hats. So this scene basically just mutes everything except for that bass synth and this other sample. These two melodic samples, by the way, are from blank form sample packs, and they are uh, they're longer form samples that I kind of just destroyed and chopped up and made them unrecognizable. And they're in the same key, so they kind of went well together. Anyways, let's meet our bass. So I have a dark reverb on this track as well. And then a bit of a filter. So you can really hear the reverb shine through here. And I also have the Q output assigned to this track. So I can manipulate that with my bass synth. And I have a high pass filter on scene 10. So as you can see, I've basically set this track up for myself to really just play around all within the same pattern by giving myself a lot of resources to kind of just do some live improv tricks. And a centerpiece of that definitely has been this videotape echo. It's super fun. And the sound that it puts on that bass synth track, like I don't really know how to describe it, but Something about it reminds me of like, if you've ever watched Nick Reinhardt's solo stuff where he does some, some pedal demos, some stuff he does with like the Maris Autobit Jr. It's just like these sort of automated reverse, like crushed square wave sounds on the bass. And it just sounds so cool. You know what, just for fun, we're gonna play around a little bit with, uh, <laughs> with some samples. So these settings are all parameter locked, you know, uh, to these different steps of the sample. So I'm kind of just like assigning different samples and, and seeing what it sounds like um, without previewing the samples, which is super fun and a good way to experiment. I am going to turn down the reverb a little bit. That rhythm is actually really cool. I don't think it'll go with our... Oh no, it does kind of go. So yeah, you can really just set up a project like this and play around to your heart's content. 
This is pretty cool. Some ethereal background stuff going on. Oh, and let's try one more. Let's go to a different sample pack. Let's try some of these bats vocal loops. The key is not going to work out here, so let me cut that. This is actually pretty cool. All right, you get it. It's super easy to get lost and keep messing around with this, and I'm probably gonna continue to do so after I shut the camera off, but you've probably seen enough. So if you're interested in supporting the channel, I have a link to my Patreon down in the description. That's probably the easiest way for you to do so. I would appreciate if you check that out. And I'm also on social media. Uh, Instagram is my spot, as well as TikTok. So if you ever wanna drop a line, just uh, check me out at Slow Haste over on other corners of the internet. All right, I hope you enjoy your day or your night, and thanks for stopping by. Peace.